when I was growing up, we had five social functions that we participated in. Now you remember back when you was a young'un, when I name them all. See, none of these cost nothing. Any entertainment that we had, it had to be something that didn't cost nothing, like peanut ballings, candy pullings, log rollings, rat killings, and coon hunts. Rat killings, I saw your eyes wall back in there. Oh, and mama, you look like you killed some in your day. Oh, I've moved whole cribs full of corn to kill them rats. You want to have some fun, you get invited to an RSVP rat killing. <laughs> oh, hey, yes, hey, go to get him. Ah! <laughs> One day, me and my brother Sonny was going across the corn crib, and we was moving that corn and killing them rats in a great big old lawn. Nasty rat run up my overhaul breeches legs. And I caught him right there above my knee. And that thing would try to bite and scratch me and I'd squeeze him, he'd go eee! I told my brother Sonny, I said, get your pocket knife. Cause I don't believe I can back him down. And I know I ain't gonna turn him loose. <laughs> my brother Sonny took his pocket knife, cut all the way around my hand. I took that old rat and I throwed him to a big old bird dog named Andy. And old Andy said, <laughs> Mama took that patch of cloth and sewed it right back in that hole. <laughs> that didn't bother me none. That wasn't the first patch on them overhauls. <laughs> we got through killing that rat, I walked out on the front porch. And I hollered to my next door neighbor that lived about a mile off. Whoop, whoop. And he hollered back, whoo, 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 whoo. That meant no. I ain't worked too hard today, be glad to go coon hunting with you. We met down in the edge of the swamps and turned them dogs loose. And they started sniffing on the ground tree five times. We caught five great big raccoons. About that time, I heard a racket. And it's somewhat scared me because me and my brother Sonny was over yonder. And I heard the racket over there. Well, I had done ordered me one of them car by lights from Sears and Roebuck, what you hang on your cap. Well, I didn't have enough of money to get the cap, too. So I done took me a piece of wire. And I done wired that light to my head. And when I heard that racket, I whooped my head around there. Then I brought my light around. And the beam of that light hit a fella right in the face. And it somewhat scared me because we was hunting on his place. I said, Mr. Barnes, that's you, it's me. I don't mind y'all hunting on my place. In fact, I went by and picked up a neighbor. And the neighbor suggested we come down here and hunt with y'all. I said, who is your neighbor? He said, John Eubanks. <laughs> I like to die. I didn't know John Eubanks was in them woods. John Eubanks was a great American. He was a great environmentalist. He was a great ecologist. He was a great conservationist. He was a great game warden. John taught us from birth, don't ever shoot no raccoon out of no tree. Give everything a sporting chance. Don't shoot him. Be fair. Take a crosscut saw hunting with you. You tree a raccoon, hold the dogs, and saw the tree down. Or 
climb the tree and goose the raccoon out. Make him jump in amongst the dogs. Don't shoot him, be fair. Sometimes we'd make that raccoon jump in amongst 20 dogs. We'd either saw the tree down or either climb the tree and goose the raccoon out. And sometimes that raccoon would jump in amongst 20 dogs, but at least he had the option of whooping all them dogs and walking off if he wanted to. That was strictly left up to the raccoon. We went on hunting and old John holler, Ooh, look for him. Y'all get this picture now. They treed up a huge sweet gum tree. You couldn't reach around this tree. There wasn't a limb on it for a while. Way up there, and I looked around at John. Come on, John, tree's too big. You can't climb that tree. John said, ain't no tree. And all these swamps, I can't climb. John got the brogan shoes off and took a couple of them squat thrust exercises and broke and run barefooted and broad jump way up through the air and popped the bottoms of his bare feet on each side of that sweet gum and then hung his fingernails in that bark. And then he commenced to shimming on up that tree. Like one of them REA pole climbers. <laughs> Knock him out, John. John got up into the top of the tree. Whoo, what a big arm. Knock him out, John. John reached around in his overhauls and got that sharp stick and drawed back and punched the coon. But it wasn't a coon. It was a lynx. We call them souped up wildcats. And that thing had great big tushies coming out of its mouth and great big claws on the end of its feet. And that thing attacked John up in the top of that tree. Whoa! Somebody do something! This thing's killing me! What's the matter with John? I don't have no idea. Knock him out, John! Whoa! That thing tore John's overhaul jumper plumb off. Oh, eating John up! Dogs got in a fight. John said, you shut up. Knock him out, John. Wah! John got feeling great pain. John knew that we toted pistols in our belts to shoot snakes with. John kept hollering, oh, shoot this thing. Woo, please shoot this thing. Mr. Barron said, John. We cannot shoot up in there. We might hit you. John said, well, just shoot up in here amongst us. One of us got to have some relief. 